Earlier, we had used the class survey data to create a bar graph and a pie chart from a column of data. Ethnicity was one of the questions we looked at. Previously, we took the data in column A and sorted it and then counted so that we had a tally for each of the categories. We can use a different command in Excel so that we don't have to sort the data in the column. And that's the pivot table. It will create a frequency distribution table for us with the categories listed in alphabetical order. So in order to do this, much like before, you still have to select the column of data. So I'm going to click on A and you can see that that column of data is shaded. I'll scroll all the way down. You can see that all of our data is selected. Then we go to Insert, but this time we're not going to go to the charts. We're going to go over to the left here and see Pivot Table. So we're going to click on Pivot Table. We've already selected our column Ethnicity. You can see that the little Dots, and dots moving around our data means it's been selected. We need to choose where we want the pivot table to be placed. So we're, we want to put it in this worksheet and I'm going to put it right beside the table there or the column of data and click OK. So we have to create the fields that we need for our table. So you can see over here, the field we have is question 12 ethnicity, that's column A. Now last time I believe I took it to columns, but I think it'll be much easier if we put it in rows. So click on question 12 ethnicity, hold it down, I didn't hold it down before. Hold it down and drag it to rows and drop let go of it. And you can see that it creates our row labels, African American, Asian, Hispanic, Native American, white. And then we had someone that did not uh, uh, give us a response, so we also had a blank uh, cell in our data. Now, in order to get the frequencies, we have to click on question 12 again and hold it down this time, and then drag it to the values and notice that it says count of question 12. So there's the count. This is like our frequency for each one of these. So we now have our frequency distribution. Now, from this frequency distribution, so I haven't had to tally anything or even type it up. I just had to use the pivot table to do that. But I can click and drag my cursor to get all the, ta uh, all the categories and go to insert and go back over to bar graph and click on the column chart, which is our bar graph, and there you have it. Now, we had a blank column there, and remember that was kind of helpful because we can go back and in that blank column I can put Pacific Islander, and we knew that there were no responses for Pacific Islander from the example we did before, but it needed to be added into our uh, bar graph so that we know that there were no Pacific Islanders in our class survey. Now totals probably not a good title for the table so we can put ethnicity from class survey. And if you want the values in the bars Remember we had options, the chart elements for that plus icon. I can go to Data Labels, and if you just click Data Labels for a bar graph, it puts them right above there. So you can, uh, it might be difficult based on this scale from 0 to 2 to realize that that is 1, but the nice thing is, is it puts those uh, 
frequencies for each problem in there. Excuse me. We can also do a pie chart. So we can select the data again, just the, not the grand total, but just the categories, and insert a pie chart. And I'm just going to scoot it over. And you can also go back and do um, data labels, do more options. And remember, we did category name and percentage when we did those. Now, if you, uh, if you think that they're, well, they appear to be in pretty good position with each color so you can see uh, what each percentage is. So using a pivot chart uh, gets you get uh, creates the frequency distribution for you so that you don't have to count each category individually.